What's up everyone, in this video we're talking about how Apple has just released GPTK 1.11, so I test the games that I still have installed, which are basically the games that I would actually play, it would end up being Marvel and Batman. And we're gonna take a look at how to actually get this, which relies on another program called CX Patcher, which you could download in the description and the links below. So this morning, Apple released GPTK 1.1 and CX Patcher actually was updated uh, this morning as well. You have to type this in, meaning that Crossover is not responsible for anything that this does so basically on the screen recording you just click and do crossovers patch but one thing that keep in mind and don't make this mistake um, is that the options happen after you select it so if you don't want to have a separate bottle you're gonna have to deselect it first before choosing crossover so again you go to advanced options i recommend not doing a separate bottle path so that yeah, you don't have to reinstall everything, but it could be something for peace of mind if you want to not mess up your original path. So the good thing about CX Patcher also is that you could restore it as I'm showcasing here, and then you simply just repatch it um, and you're good to go. So yeah, that's it from a CX Patcher perspective. And then there are some other tweaks that you could do with CX Patcher um, or crossovers in general, which involves tweaking some of the settings. So once you go into crossovers and it's loaded up, um, you could of course enable D3D Metal, which will get you the new GPTK 1.1. And then there are M-Sync and Async options available from CX Patcher that if you go and right click your bottle, open Steam <coughs> C drive, then you open the text editor of the configuration file at the very bottom. There will be the user defined environments and I have these two enabled which is msync and async so with that said you want to make sure also you have async disabled um, and let's take a look at the performance of spider-man so from my perspective I of course compare these directly with the previous YouTube video I patched or showcased I literally downloaded YouTube and did a side-by-side -side comparison but talking through it just from a gameplay perspective um, you know I think recency bias is uh, is real, but I will say that you know, from a more technical perspective and what I've seen of people commenting, you have better overall frame rates averages, which means you know the lows aren't as bad, and of course if the highs are high, that's good or more good frames. So I think you could watch my other video on this channel where I tested Spider-Man. It was on one The way to way know that like that CX patcher actually worked is when you look at day. the metal HUD. You see that it says Rosetta X86 V1.1, which is directly underneath that uh, FPS charting graph. So yeah, I personally think that um, this is good progress as Apple is continuing to update their game port toolkit. Hopefully we get more developers using this tool to actually make a native version that runs on metal instead of um, you know, Apple coming up with a impromptu way to actually play Windows DX12 games, um, you would get an increased improvement compared to native games such as WoW or Boulder's Gate or Resident Evil that would just not compare to what the Game Boy Toolkit is running on Wine Patched. Now the next game we test out is Batman, which I think actually has a significant improvement um, compared to 1.0 and other versions I've tried to test. Um, you, know, you can see here, this could be possibly also due to M-Sync or a shader, at least um, not so much of a one-to-one -one comparison, but I do just want you to keep in mind that, um, you know, seeing this footage running at 70 FPS where before, later in this video, you'll see it used to run at like 30, 45, going down, shaders loading, stuff like that. I think it would make an enjoyable experience um, now as a recommendation for people wanting to have a lightweight gaming laptop or a capable laptop with the exception of anti-cheat and stuff of that nature. If you find a YouTuber or you browse the Mac Gaming subreddit or the Wikipedia page, you'll get options to decide if the games you play are available. That's my take on the state of Mac Gaming. There is of course also usually issues with shaders loading. Um, but the M3 Pro seems very capable. Now to save money, you could get away with using the M1 Pro um, from Micro Center or getting a refurbished M2 Pro if you, if you want to prefer using Apple Direct. Um, but overall, yeah, I'd say um, 
you know, with Gameport Toolkit coming out, M1 Pro probably is about to wait for a second. Might have to turn some settings down, change the FPS. Um, but you know, with M3 Pro being two thousand four hundred dollars, there is also other Windows options that you could consider, such as the ROG X Flow, which is two point seven pounds. You could get a version that doesn't have a graphics card and just uses the AMD APU, which is really good. Um, other than that, you could get the Zephyrus, which is also heavy. You have to deal with fan noises, but those two laptops I recommended have great battery power. And then, of course, you know, you've seen my RTX videos versus the GPU. Um, the dedicated laptop just beats this hands down. So here I compare side by side. So on the left, you have 1.1 Spider Man swinging around at 70 frames per second. And then looking at the screen, we get 40 frames per second. Now keep in mind, this isn't like a 1.1, like this, like GPTK 1.1 is, is the magical solution. Apple keeps improving it. There are some changes such as the e-sync thing I showed, which wasn't done in the previous YouTube video. And then I believe the settings are all the same, but, um, you know, you could always tweak FSR in this game, which is the AMD dynamic resolution and choose your targeted frame rates. So in this particular one, it's set towards 120. So, um, just wanted to kind of use this as a comparison of the, the state of Mac gaming is that you could continuously find tweaks to do, get updates from Apple. I believe that, you know, we're seeing a consistent updates now at 1.1, almost coming out every two months and then beta is always coming out. So that's a positive sign in the Mac gaming space. And of course there's crossovers constantly updating their libraries here in Batman. We see the difference of, you know, 29 frames per second to 70 frames per second. Again, I just want to constantly reiterate, it's not just GPTK 1.1. I have uh, M-Sync enabled and Async, which I did not do before. And of course I can't really showcase it um, of crossovers versus crossover CX patcher because I didn't create a separate bottle. Um, I could theoretically use Whiskey, which is not updated yet and still uses, I believe, uh, GPTK 1.0. So that's also, you know, for more methodology, some people prefer that if they don't want to pay for crossovers, which is a month by month or not month by month, it's a yearly license. Um, eventually whiskey will happen. And of course you could install GP, uh, the game port toolkit yourselves, just downloading the damage and then compiling it, which for some people I've heard takes like an hour. So yeah, that's my take on, um, you know, positive improvement to in the Mac gaming space. Literally just recorded this on one voiceover recording, speaking top of mind. So props to myself for doing that. Props to you for listening. Let me know your thoughts on what you think of Mac gaming. I know there's a big crowd going because they don't want to get Windows laptops. They like the sleekness. And you know, even though you're probably two generations, three generations behind in performance in uh, gaming laptops compared to Windows, you just like the, the build quality, the quiet fan noise stuff like that so leave a comment subscribe if you haven't one subscribe will give me five cents the subscribes add up maybe one day i'll hit 3,000 subs maybe when the m4 comes out next year see you guys in the next video peace